Towards the end of the EDS introduction video, we briefly mention the challenges of organising the store and in this video we give some suggestions as to folder structure and naming of files. Organising a data and document store is really no different to organising files and folders on your own PC. However, it's generally used by several individuals, so it's a good idea to establish a structure and naming convention, at least for the top level folders and files. We'll start by having a look at an example file structure. This has been set up in Dropbox, but could just as easily be on a shared network device or even on the hard drive of a team member. At the top level, there are five main folders, general documents, common database, then three folders to reflect the three research areas of the project. You will notice that we have included a number at the start of the folder name. This effectively gives you control over the sort order for your folders and would recommend this for top level folders. The general documents folder contains the project proposal, the log frame, theory of change, reports, etc. These are all documents for the project as a whole. The folders for the research areas each contain subfolders and where there are elements expected from each research area we have included subfolders with the same names. For example, each of our research areas have subfolders for protocols, tools, photos and reports. Each also has a database folder for the data from that particular research area. These folders have slightly different names but all include the word database in the name and all have the same numeric prefix making it easy to find the data. The common database folder at the top level would contain data relevant to the project as a whole such as pharma demographic data. If we go into research tools we have data recording sheets, field presentations, manuals and questionnaires. We have divided reports into monthly reports, MSc theses, PowerPoint presentations for workshops and published papers. We stress again that this is just an example structure. You and your team should develop your own structure that suits your needs. To consider file names, we will look at files in the general documents folder. It's important to give your files meaningful names. The file names shown here are examples of what we mean. The names clearly indicate what we will find in each file. You'll notice we also have included a string of eight digits at the end of each file name. This represents the date four digits for the year, two for the month and two for the day. Thus the project proposal was produced on the 12th of June 2009. You'll also notice there are two theory of change documents. The first is dated the 30th of January 2010 and the second one the 23rd of March 2010. Some people like to keep previous versions of documents like this and with this method of naming the files you can easily see which is the most up to date. Don't rely on the date modified as this sometimes picks the date a file was moved or copied and you can see in this example it's no help to us at all. Also if you have any access databases for example the date modified changes whenever you open the database file regardless of whether or not you make any changes. Such naming conventions may seem either obvious or superfluous, but before we move on, let's see an example of what can happen if naming conventions are not established and agreed on by the whole team. In this folder, the files are all different versions of a document on presenting results, but it's far from clear which version is the most up to date or whether there is any reason for so many versions. Where you store your DDS depends on the resources and local skills you have available. The simplest solution is to have a shared network drive to which all team members have access. In the SSC we have a network storage device with several shared folders to which staff have different access levels. Another option is to use something like Dropbox as we have demonstrated in this video. This is a service that allows you to store and access your files from anywhere and to share them with anyone you choose. There are numerous cloud storage systems available and if your team are widely dispersed it would be worthwhile investigating the different options. It's much easier to set up good structures from the outset but of course this often doesn't happen and you find yourself with a mess and a mess is hard to organise. Here's a suggestion. 
Ignore the mess for now. Shut the door on it. We'll call it a backlog. Now set up your structures and systems as though you were starting from scratch. Any incoming documents and data files can go immediately into the new structure you have. Once your new system is working, perhaps after a few tweaks, it's time to return to your backlog. Spend a little time each day moving items from your backlog into your new system, even just a few minutes. With all new items going directly into your new system, your backlog can only get smaller until it disappears altogether. The data and document store is a system to help you keep all your project files together in a central location. A well-organised DDS means that team members can always access the latest documents and data and data integrity is preserved. Archiving at the end of the project is made easier and quicker. As we said, the examples and suggestions we've shown here are not hard and fast rules for organising your DDS. You may have alternative structures and systems that work for you and your team. Whatever structure you choose, it should be agreed by the whole team so that everyone knows where to store information and how to find it again. But remember, there is no special software involved and there is certainly no magic wand to organise your files. As a team, you must decide on the structure of your DDS and ensure it becomes a useful resource and not just a file dump.